And uh, he's he's you know he's he passed his first test like you said. Sid, it's not he you know he is not he, we can't say he's gonna be a world beater yet, but he's a guy who we know we could put in as a uh, at, at quarterback at some point and uh, get the type of uh, pro level play that we've been begging for in this city. Who else impressed you outside of fields? I mean, were there like some defensive guys that impressed you? Were there some old line guys? You know, though we talked to Earl said, I talked earlier about the old line problems the bears are having with Jenkins, you yeah. know, still having back issues. So who, you know, among like the, both the defensive and old lines, who impressed you the most? Well, I'll, let's I'll start with the old uh, the old line. I think it's it's interesting, uh, you know, the whole development with getting Jason Peters in that coming <laughs> that, that same day. But uh, I thought I thought as a unit they didn't look entirely bad. I think what what we you know starting from the early uh, the early drives where Dalton was Dalton was still out there. You know, you saw some of the same sort of uh, underneath passing and sort of frustrating thing that we saw last year with, you know, uh, with the, with the quarterbacks, you know, really all, all the quarterbacks that we saw last year. But, uh, you know, I, I liked one player, one player that I noticed early on was, uh, was uh, Williams. I think the, 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 uh, the, uh, the signing from KC, uh, uh, oh, Damian he, Williams. Damian yeah. Williams, yeah. yeah. He was uh, – I, I liked a couple of his runs early on. Um, uh, sticking to that position, Khalil Her Herbert was really impressive, and uh, he seemed to be a nice uh, – you know, a nice option that uh, that Fields was pretty comfortable with uh, in those last – you know, those last drives in the second quarter and, and especially in those uh, touchdown drives in the third. In the third. Um Say uh, you know, like I say, going going uh, across the board on the offense, you know, the, of course the guys who, step, who who made plays, James and uh, um, uh, what James and what's my man name Adams? Yeah, Adams had a couple plays, and uh, even uh, even Justin Hardy made a couple plays that uh, you know, you, you, he that stood out. So it's good to see some of those second and third string guys. Who uh, you know? Who uh, Fields is working with at the moment, being able to benefit from being uh, from working with him on defense. I like you know Ogletree uh, is the sort of a guy that's jumped out to everybody to a lot of people. He had one uh, missed assignment uh, early on that uh, you know gave that gave a big fifty yard play and uh, helped uh, Miami get an early field goal. Uh, but uh, you know he sort of responded to that uh, in uh, in the next drive, I believe, in a, a later play. And um, you know he, he and overall he responded to his uh, you know giving up that play with some pretty good coverage. And uh, and and that, that was some pretty good. I, I liked overall the uh, the front seven had some pretty, but were pretty stout. Uh, whether you're looking at the first unit or the second unit, when uh, especially when against Brissett. They made him. They made him work pretty hard, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it was it was good to see uh, some of those second line players and third line players. I had to got to get the roster out for some of them, but uh, I just wrote some numbers down. <laughs> but uh, you know, like I say, some of these guys who are who are really working for position, working for uh, you know jobs right now. I think showed some good effort, and um, you know it, it's it's it was we didn't see much of the first unit on defense th this week. So it'll be nice to see, you know, see those guys uh, stepping up for, but, uh, but I think uh, stepping up in the, in the future games, but uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it'll be, uh, like I said, we'll, we'll be uh, looking forward to that. But I think overall, when you look at the, the defense, not like I said, not having mo a lot of his stars out there the, in the defensive backfield in particular, uh, you know, they held on. You know, they there were some early worries, mm -hmm. worrying uh, mm -hmm. there were against Tua. You know, he Tua looked pretty impressive to me. Uh, you know, looking at the opponents, but uh, you know, but they they held on and they uh, you know, got stronger. I think the defense actually got stronger as you know as the game went on, and 
you know, that, that part of that was going against lesser quarterbacks, but you know, it, it is what it is. You take it, take uh, the good with the bad of these games. Oh yeah. That's why they call it the preseason. Uh, as I said exactly. before, it's a dress rehearsal. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Kyle Means, content director for War Media, is joining us here on Second City Sports Live on Sports Zone Chicago, along with Lakita McGee. I am Sidney Browns. We talk about the Bears and Dolphins preseason game, reviewing it from last Saturday. Let's stick with the defense, Kyle, as our guy Armando checks in. He says Ogletree was all over the field. He must be reading my mind because that's, that was the next question I was mm-hmm. going to ask you. Uh, give us your uh, take on Alec Ogletree. He came into camp 20 pounds lighter. Uh, he dominated in practice last week leading up to the game. I thought he was uh, he he was the best player uh, the, during his time on the field, along with whoever was number 93 for the Bears. So those two guys really uh, showed their worth uh, uh, on defense last Saturday. I'm going to shout out a couple guys, see I'm, let, me get my, let me get my roster out. But uh, yeah, let's start with Ogletree. I think, you know, for him being the story that he's become over the over the course of camp, it's really a good thing to see the Bears, you know, get a guy, you know, seemingly off the scrap heap mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, make, it, make some, you know, really motivate, you know, help motivate a guy, you know, a journeyman guy in the league and, and he seemed to have found a place here. So I you know, I think he you know he's had some you know varying play in, in places like New York and uh, where he's been before. But you know, if he if he can be if he can find his way in the rotation here in Chicago as a linebacker, that'll be great. And it'll, it'll be great for the again the depth and the uh, versatility of that linebacking core. So uh yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing his his play more. And I think uh like I said, you mentioned 93 Vaughters. Yeah, Vaughters was yeah. Up. yeah, he's he's I think he could be promising very, very much so off the edge. I think another couple guys I was uh you know, I think Tonga, the, the rookie, yeah. uh was pretty, you know, did did a couple things. And um was was another guy uh I singled out. Um what is it? Sit? No, there we go. Archibong, yeah, seven uh Daniel Archibong. Uh, Archibong, yeah. Was a guy who who especially in the second half showed a lot of energy. So yeah, they got some they they got some versatility along that front seven. I, the front seven again was very um impressive to me and throughout the game. And um, you know, I think the uh, the backfield sort of DeAndre, uh, DeAndre Houston Carson, I think, stood out in the defensive backfield. Uh but you know, Trey Robinson made or made a couple of plays too, but uh, beyond that, I think you know, you again, you were dealing with mostly second line players, but you know, I, I would, I, I've been thinking uh, for the past couple of months, I would have liked, you know, with, with this type of move again, going back to the the Peters move that they made recently, that they that's a similar type of move that they may need to make in that mm-hmm. defensive backfield. You know, maybe try to find some veteran reclamation project. That and and see if they could work a guy in, because you know I I just think they need some more bodies if if you know not talent in that unit you know because they like say Tua was was taking advantage of some of their their coverage and some holes in their coverage early on so and that's the type of guy you're going to be seeing more so than Co- you'll be seeing more Tua's than Jacoby Brissett's in the in the regular season. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, what about the the rushing? You know, the running game because you know we didn't see too much of David Montgomery, and but then yeah, you know like Pierce, Pierce looked snaps. real. Yeah, I want to say yeah. You know, and Pierce, Pierce looked good. You know, Damian Williams only had a couple of carries, only for four yards. But where do you see the Bears' running game going? Well, I, I again, um, actually, I like the couple, the little bit that I saw from Williams, and um, yeah, your yeah, Pierce was Pierce was pretty strong later in the game. And, uh, you know, and Herbert really uh, stood out to me, uh, especially with his pass catching ability. That was nice to see uh, out the backfield. So I think a lot of it's going to depend on, on the line, you know, the health of the line and their ability to jail. And, um, you know, we'll, uh, another person we didn't see out there was Dan- James Daniels and, you know, in guard. So, mm-hmm. you know, when, when you get him in, you know, we'll see how Peters works in this, in this whole thing. You know, Nagy mentioned him being uh, a guy who's going to be going after that left tackle position, that starter left tackle position. That's, you know, that's why, uh, to, to paraphrase, that's why he's here. So, uh, you know, 
we we got to see we got to see how that that line continues to mold together. But I think the talent is there in in that backfield. I like I liked Damian Williams as a pickup from the moment I heard it in the winter. And uh, of course, we know what we got with Montgomery. He's a guy who can do some special things. And um, it'll be nice to see one of these younger guys, be it Pierce or Herbert, you know, possibly step up as a third option out that backfield. So I think the, I think that's a place where they pot- potentially can show some strength. Kyle Means, content director from War Media, WeAreGorillo.com, is joining us here on Second City Sports on Sports Zone Chicago. Lakina and Sid here with you, Kyle. What are we going to do with the special teams? Cordell Patterson, yeah. Sherrick McManus is no longer with us uh, as far as the uh, being on the roster is concerned. I saw two fumbles out there on Saturday. Uh, do you think uh, – how can they get this turned around? Or, or do you think we have to uh, search for a guy or two off the street again? We may because Jordan, <laughs> Jordan Lucas got the nerve to wear 23 too and, and, had those, and oh, yeah. did those uh, – fumbles and everything in that in that cut in that return yeah that is that that didn't look good at all but overall just they're they had some bad uh a lot of bad field placement in the game you know they weren't able to like say get much out of the returns and they yielded a lot of yards uh to miami in their return so yeah they they got some work to do in the special teams and that's they're going to make life a lot harder just because we got a potentially more dynamic quarterback in fields. Mm-hmm. You don't want them to have to have him pinned back so much and, in, in, uh you know, the inside the 20, inside the 10, you know, mm-hmm. and you definitely don't want to have, uh, I, I think, want to have uh, Dalton in those positions early on. You're just going to be expedi- expediating his uh, uh, move to the bench if you have him uh, in those bad field positions yeah. to start off. So, yeah, the um, I don't know what the options are. I don't, you know, I, the the whole part of the uh, the storyline all off season has been uh, the financial restraints for the team, not having much money. Uh, but uh, if if we we'll probably see more uh, going in after that, uh, we'll probably know more. I should say after that Buffalo game, you know what the uh, what the options are, and you know, but. Uh, no, hopefully somebody else could step up in this in on this team. You know, may, maybe you know uh, Lucas just had a bad game, but uh, uh, it, you know he gonna have to step up. Especially, again, especially if he gonna wear twenty three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what a, what a, probably you better back it up if you're gonna wear twenty three. So, where when do you think everyone's asking when are we gonna see Justin Fields in a regular season game? Are we gonna see him week one against the Rams? Are we gonna see him probably you know midway through the season after a bye or maybe right maybe the last four games of the season? What what's your take? Is it's it's too much to ask, I think, unless something really weird happens or bad to have for Justin to be there in the first week, even you know he may light it up in the in the next two games in the preseason, but like I said, unless something really bad happens with Dalton, he's going to be there in in week one. I think when you look at the you know the quotes from Nagy, uh, the way that they want to approach it, though they they just want they just want to be able to make sure that the that the time is right for Fields and that you know that that the option is. It's the most obvious option at the time. I don't think they want to create a controversial uh, situation too in the in the in the room. Nagy was very after the game. Nagy on um, Saturday. Nagy was very much uh, insisting on the professionalism of all three of the guys who are still there. You know, uh, f- folding folds in as well, and just the fact that uh, they're all sort of taking things as they come. And you know the situation has been set, and the plan is the plan going forward. It's not, you know, they're not going to be swayed by our, all of our, uh, you know, maniacal reactions and amongst the fans and the media in Chicago. Of course, you know we gonna we gonna act the way that we act in re- in reaction to a performance like we saw Saturday. But they they have to exist in the, on another space. At Hallis Hall, and I I respect them for that. I don't I understand it, 
I, I wouldn't I, I don't advocate either for that type of situation where, you know, we're we're wondering week to week what the situation is at quarterback. Let Dalton have this have his time to perform. And, you know, I I think personally Dalton's gonna show himself out the door on his own pretty soon. Uh, within the first half of the season, and um, then we'll we'll have we'll get to move on and to the glorious Fields era fully. But uh, you know, I'm not rooting for it. That's just what I'm. That's just what I'm predicting. But uh, yeah, you know, we don't. Like I said we don't need to push that. Let let Dalton have his time. He as long as he remains professional, and uh, you know, like I say, doesn't get in the kid's way. You know. He, this is what this is the role that he's here for. He is a transitional guy. Let it let that play out. But but I, I but I still think with if Fields keeps up the play like he has in the you know, if if he keeps up the level of play that he's had on Saturday, it won't take long before he's on the field. Uh, heading down the home stretch with our guy Kyle Means from War Media, the content director, right here on Second City Sports Live and in Living Color on Sports Zone Chicago. Sid and Lakina here with you. Uh, sticking with uh, Justin Fields, Kyle. I know you were there in, in the in the in the uh, post game um, press conference and watching it on television and on social media. Justin Fields looks like he gets it already from a PR standpoint, the way he composes himself and the way he presents himself uh, to, to, to the fans and to the public. But he made a comment following the game on Saturday saying that the game slowed down from him. You usually don't hear that from a young player till about his second or third year when they figured everything out when they've been playing for a while. Uh, what did you think about those comments? Well, yeah, he, it was a, you know, it's a, it's a, it was an easy uh, comment to, to single out. And, uh, you know, a lot of people did, including myself. I'm going to shout out uh, our guy, uh, uh, Joe Lewis, over at uh, 79th mm -hmm. for Hollis and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Bigs, who he asked a question that uh, that yielded that answer. And there is a fuller context to that answer. To that answer. And it, it, it basically goes into the fact that Fields has been able to see a high-level professional defense in the Bears day after day so his the pressure or the speed that he may have seen at Hallis hall every day it was you know with a first level first uh string defense like that it it wasn't as comparable to what he saw on saturday from mostly a second string miami defense so uh, you know we have to you know like i said we just have to take everything in context with these sort of statements. He's not, he wasn't saying it in a brash way. He wasn't saying it in a boastful way. He was just, you know, being honest. And, and I would hate for fields to feel like he can't be honest with the media and the fans here in Chicago. So, you know, I, I don't think, I think in Chicago, mostly we, we've accepted the, the comment in a, uh, you know, for what it was, I think there was some mm -hmm. people uh, in the national media, especially ex players and stuff, who was like, "Oh, okay, we'll see, kid," and all that. I mean, come on, man. You know, but regardless of that, I think Fields is ready for any challenges that that are coming that are coming for him. I think he is a very level-headed kid. He's a kid who's seen a lot. He's been through some challenges on the, on the lower levels. Uh, college, you know, transferring from Georgia to Ohio State and everything, playing under the pressure of Ohio State and playing in two uh, college football playoff seasons. You know, I don't, this is not a kid who's going to get rattled easily at all. You know, so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him uh, gain more confidence and uh, you know, and, and I think he will gain more confidence on the field. And as he plays more with that first unit on in uh, on the field, and you know, be it in preseason or on a regular season, I think he's going to have reason to uh, feel comfortable and feel like, yeah, this is a natural adjustment to me. He's not gonna, yeah, he's not gonna take over the game right away. He's not gonna be dominant. He's not gonna be throwing, you know, blind passes like, uh, you know, like uh, 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 my man in Kansas City and everything. But uh, like Mahomes, but uh, he's gonna be doing what he can, what he knows he can do, and he learns quickly. He learn. I think 
he has a great sense of himself on the field. Like again, going back to the calmness and the ability to, uh, like say, read situations around him, defense around him, and and just read, you know, navigate the space that he's allowed on the field. You know, he had the one play late in the first half where he, uh, you know, fumbled and everything going along mm-hmm. the sideline, and you know, he after. After the game, he was like, "Well, I'm gonna have to retire that spin move." So, you know, because you know he was that was that was the thing before where he was talk he would talk about going back to that big hit that he took in that Clemson game, yeah, uh, a year or so ago or, or two years ago. But uh, you know how he sort of worked that into his repertoire to avoid getting hit. But he he realized after that play Saturday where he fumbled is like the primary thing is taking control, taking care of the ball. So, you know, it is, you know, you want to not get hit of course, but you are, but more than anything, you want to take care of the ball. So I think his mindfulness on the field will be uh, a great weapon for him. And uh, it's a shot. It's, it's a sign of maturity, I believe in, in his uh, case. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm not worried about him being overconfident and I don't think the NFL should be worried about that. You're not you're not gonna knock him down either way. I think this is a guy who's ready to to and he he knows who he is and he's gonna be ready to take on all comers, but he's gonna do it in a way that is uh like I say mature and uh uh and and mindful and and not you know say not uh over over you no know, uh overconfident overconfident yeah, over cockiness yeah not cocky yeah. <laughs> Well, your last question for me, Kyle. Uh, where are, what are you? What are your expectations for this Bears team? I mean, some have said you know maybe ten and seven, you know nine and eight, eight and nine. Hmm. You know what? What are what are your expectations for this team? It's if I had to if I had to do a a, a record, uh, you know, prediction right now, I probably would be in that ten and seven range, maybe. <laughs> maybe at eleven six at uh to as a ceiling. It's hard to read right now with this team. Uh I think uh, again you have some you have some issues and some key areas that you uh offensive line, uh defensive backfield that uh you know I think some some things that need to be uh sorted out. They had they they do have a lot of strengths on this team. Uh some vet you know some good veteran leadership has remains and um you know the idea of fields maybe starting most of the games possibly this year is exciting but i think this is this is a team that has a, a difficult schedule as well and that their division remains competitive uh with uh minnesota and green bay uh in particular so uh you know i'm I, like I said, we, we, this is a process that the Bears are sort of restarting uh, with their quarterback leadership and everything and some, and some leadership in some other key areas. So it's, it'll be hard to see them uh, being a division winner again, but th- I think they could very well contend for a wild card position. Uh, pretty much the team like we saw last year, uh, you know, fight fight for the, one of those last uh, positions. Uh, towards the end of the season, and um, you know, maybe be along that, like I say, uh, ten and seven or eleven, uh, t- eleven, ten, nine. I don't, I don't know. Like I said, with the seventeen games now, uh, will a nine eight record have the same? Uh, you know, a whole, will, you know, nine and seven usually could get you in the playoffs. I don't know if nine or eight will will be as effective, but. Uh, I would like to say that's the range I, w- I would look at right now. Nine to 11 wins for this team. Last question for me, Kyle. Uh, I know it was a, a great day and a glorious day for you personally. I saw your pictures on social media uh, before the game via your Instagram. I was going to text you and say, uh, uh, tell our good friend Luke Connell, as we said hello, along with Anthony Heron. You know, many of the <laughs> colleagues that cover the Bears, we had them on various shows throughout the years, including this show. Yeah. Uh, describe that day. Uh, your, that day for you personally, covering your very first Bears game, uh, working in this business along with us for a while, and still continue to do what you do. Uh, describe the whole day for, uh, for you personally. Oh man, it was a lot of emotion involved in it, man. You know, I, I spoke, like I said, um, I did my post on social media, and I, 
you know, I spoke on just having everybody in mind that has helped carry me and carry uh, the war label and brand uh, throughout the years. And you two are involved in, in that as well as so many others, you know, Dean Davis, of course, uh, you know, Tony Gill, uh, so many, I mean, it's a lot of people I can mention, you know, but um, it was, it was great. You know, you mentioned some of the people who we, you know, it, it's mm-hmm. interesting we've hobnobbed in some ways and booked throughout the years, you know, you yeah. and I, and um, it's, so it made it comfortable to see people like, like say Luke Canellis and uh, you know, I, I got to talk with Cheryl Ray Stout yes. uh, up there. She was a couple seats uh, to the side of me in the, in the booth. She, you know, she was uh, <laughs> complained mm-hmm. about the air conditioning up there. You know? <laughs> you gotta keep a little warm yeah. for Cheryl, man. Give a, get a sweater or something, you know, you know, but uh, but yeah, it was it was uh, it was quite an experience, you know. Other people, you know, uh, you know, uh, newer. They, I was one of a few newer people who was up there, and and I want to give credit to the Bears for uh, reaching out to uh, other media sources, independent media sources. They've worked with uh, the National Association of Black Journalists, our local chapter mm-hmm. here in Chicago. With that, I'm a part of that chapter, and you know, so I was able to get in on that and. Uh, you know, if if you look back like three months ago, and somebody was to tell me, "Oh, Kyle, you know, you you might you're gonna be covering a Bears game pretty soon," you know, I'd been like, "Man, what you sipping on?" And you know, can you pass it to me? You know, cause mm-hmm. I didn't, I wouldn't have uh, expected that to be the case, man. And you know, I just like I say, just been I've been 15 years in the game as a sports reporter. You know, these are the sort of things that you get into the industry. You know, anticipating that you want that you will do you don't know at what point you'll do these things mm-hmm. and but um you know I, I i have to admit like at a certain point i sort of was thinking and coming to the uh realization sort of that i may not get to do these things and i may not get to do everything that i anticipated doing as a journalist and um you know just to have that moment, like I say, I don't know how many more games I'm going to do, but uh, just to be able to to say that I had that one chance to do it is a blessing and, and definitely something that I uh, very much, uh, you know, appreciate. Yeah. Just before we close, I remember uh, us, of course, uh, Lakeen, I know you weren't there with us, but I, mm-hmm. I remember uh, us covering Bears training camp 2014 through 2016 yeah. last year at Trestman, mm-hmm. which was that season was a disaster. Of course, the first <laughs> years of the John Fox administration, you know, just for me personally, I know you can relate to this as well, Kyle, you know, shaking uh, GM Brian Pace's hands, shaking John Fox's hand, you know, just mm-hmm. watching the players from basically fence level down the field level in a, or down there in Bourbon, they, you know, talking with the fans. And I know you got a chance to talk with the players uh, uh, up close. I didn't get a chance to do that part, but, and I, I know you D and Ken did, but just uh, coming a long way just for covering training camp. It doesn't seem like that long ago, but just uh, looking back, I was like, wow, we did a lot and we still doing it, but you know, we, we come a mighty long way. <laughs> and yeah. And, and, you know, I just want to make sure I say this before I go off to, you know, I, I want so much of what I do, man, is, is to try to break through uh, opportunities for as many people as possible. That's been part of the mission for of War Media since, you know, we started back in 2013. Like, it's creating opportunities and platforms for people who wouldn't have them otherwise. And Chicago is a, it's a very competitive, very... Uh, mm-hmm. busy sports uh, mm-hmm. market and media market. And a lot of people can get lost in the shuffle, but a lot of people are here, uh, you know, talented people like y'all. And, uh, you know, I just, I live for the the day when as many people of, many people as possible, people of color, women, uh, mm-hmm. get the chance to uh, live out their, uh, you know, ambitions and their, their passions as sports reporters, sports uh, broadcasters, you know, we ain't, we ain't doing this just for play. You know, we, Mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that keep that hinder us from, uh, you know, doing this that, that get in our way, I should say. And, but we still do these things. And, 
you know, it's meaningful when you get to break through and, and get to different levels of the game. So, you know, I, I keep us, I'm going to keep grinding and try to do as much as I can to help others. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I want to see more faces like ours in the, mm-hmm. in these press conferences at Soldier Field and at all the other pro stadiums as well. I think the Bears, again, have shown a nice step forward here with their reaching out to other uh, uh, media sources and to community uh, sources. And, uh, yeah, definitely I think that's uh, uh, something that the uh, the, Be- the Bulls and the Sox and the Cubs can, uh, uh, mm-hmm. you know, can do more of as well as well as, well as others. So. Yeah, like you said, yeah, go ahead, Lakina. No, I was like, where, where can people find you in the social media, Kyle? Uh, you can find me um, under uh, Means Matters uh, on Twitter, uh, K Mean on IG. Those are pretty much where I'm most active. And if, uh, anything Regal, uh, War, W A R R Media, uh, I'm usually controlling those <laughs> accounts as well. So you can reach me there. Uh, yeah, like I say, War Media on Twitter, I- IG, uh, Facebook as well. And uh, Sub on the um, uh, uh, YouTube, <laughs> you can find uh, you know somebody the all of our all of the Second City Sports videos uh, going back for the past year, and um, uh, Anchor FM Anchor dot FM uh, search for War Media, and you'll get you no know, these uh, you'll get you'll continue to get the Second City Sports podcast. So uh, definitely. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with y'all, and I'm like I said, I'm just re- glad that y'all are still doing y'all thing, and, and y'all are uh, I think you're gonna thrive a lot with uh, sec- uh, sports zone. Yeah, thank you very much, Kyle, and thank you uh, very much for the opportun- uh, opportunity to, uh, to do this show. Of course, now as you mentioned, we're on Sports Zone Chicago. Hopefully, you get to cover another Bears game or two. Hope you never know; you may have to cover them for the entire season. You never know. So, yeah, I love that, man. I love <laughs> that. I, you know, like I said, I'm 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 at least in there <laughs> with the mm. with the media folks. Uh, you yeah. Know, so uh, I don't like I said, I don't know how many games I'm gonna go to, but I, I do have access to a lot of media sources that uh pretty much the the regular reporters have now. So I'm gonna try to utilize that the best I can. Okay. You are gonna be all up in them zooms, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I might be. Yeah, I might be. You know, <laughs> all up in the oh, zooms. Your fun, all of, get your foot. Get your foot. Get your foot in yeah. the door. That's all you. That's all you need. <laughs> exactly. You know. Let yeah. Let the talent take the, the talent to take you the rest of the way, but. The grind is always there, man. Yeah, it's just like the late great James Brown once said, just open the door, the rest I'll get it myself. Facts. Mm -hmm. (laughs) On that note, Mm -hmm. Kyle Means from War Media, he's the content director there. He can't get rid of us just yet. He loves us too damn much. (laughs) No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, Kyle, thanks again for joining us, and we'll talk to you again soon, okay? All right, thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all. All All right. Thanks, Kyle. Stay safe. You too. Uh, all right, so that's Kyle Means, content director of We Are Real Radio dot com, and also too. Hopefully, we'll be seeing you'll be seeing more of him at the Bears games. You know, sometime during mm-hmm. the season. Now we're going to take a really quick break, and but we still got a lot of stuff to talk about. Instead, ESPN makes it official. Alex Smith's part of there going to be part of the football coverage this year. Also, mm-hmm. to the AP Top 25 for college football is out, and I'll give you guys three guesses on who's number one. Oh, really? <laughs> maybe, maybe three maybe three or four guesses, I guess. So, <laughs> with Sydney Brown, I'm Lakina McGee. This is Second City Sports on Sports Zone Chicago, and we'll see you in a bit. Mm-hmm.